Hello, hello, hello. Today's uh, February 8th, 2024. Um, today I'm going to be doing something new with the journals. I kind of just got this idea last night. And um, just whenever I finish a book, that'll be the journal for the day. I'll just talk about the book. Sort of a book review, but more of like an overview. You know, I'm not going to necessarily critique the book unless I find something worth critiquing. Um, who am I to critique anyways? Um, but yeah, it's taken me a while, admittedly, to finish Invisible Man by Ralph Ellison. Um, you know, I'm a little bit embarrassed that I this is the first book this year that I've finished, but that's besides the point. Um, Invisible Man by Ralph Ellison is an American classic. It was published in 1952, and in 1953 it won the National Book Award for Fiction, making Ralph Ellison the first African-American person to to win the award um, this is obviously still in the Jim Crow era of the United States and the book definitely um, deals with these sorts of topics um, but before we go there first and foremost if you want a book that is just really sort of this enthralling read a beautiful read even this is a book for you this is it feels like you're almost reading a book about poet or a, a poetry book in many cases. Um, even with some of the dialogue, Re Ellison is just at the top of his game, so to speak. Um, the language is beautiful. Um, I should probably grab it out of my bookcase real quick. This is the book. Um, it's long. For sure but it's very good um sorry that was just like this unnecessary break but the the novel discusses life as an african-american man in ralph ellison's case um the narrator is unnamed which is really perfect for this entire you know notion of what it's like to be an African-American person at this time is to be invisible, you know? And so giving them no name is, is really a masterstroke. And uh, I guess here's a spoiler, but the, the, the narrator, the main character joins an organization um, in New York city and they give him a, a new name. Um, and, um, I don't know, I just think, I think that, that perfectly plays into the, the idea here, right? Like, you're not being yourself. This is automatically a sign that our narrator, who is a younger person, probably should have realized is just this political organization is using the narrator, um, sort of like in an, an, an id poll sort of way, you know, using him as a way to rile up Harlem for their own political aims and goals. But I still feel it's relevant today, this book. Obviously, we're not in the Jim Crow era anymore, but we have seen that there are still plenty of people within this country that either feel African Americans are just votes, numbers, um, they don't see the culture. They don't see, you know, the individuals for who they are. Yeah, in many cases, they also see them just as athletes. And then here, I might offer up a bit of a controversial opinion. Um, you know, keeping in mind that while I do think this book sheds light on what it means to be an African-American person, there's still, I mean you can look at me and realize that I can never truly know what it's like to be an African American in this, in this country. Right. So keeping this in mind, you know, I need to make that clear, but keeping this in mind, I feel you can apply Ellison's logic to, you know, other people on the margins of American society as well, whether they're women, someone in the LGBT community, or even, really fundamentally the proletariat. I'm not sure how Ellison would feel about this, 
Um, but mainly when I say the proletariat, I think he'd agree with with women and LGBT people to an extent. I'm not sure on Allison's positions on those groups. Um, but you see, you see where I'm going, I hope. Right, like, when it comes down to the concentration of power, sure, there are some women and there are some LGBT people and there are some people that have come from, you know, nothing in the material sense of the word. But one of the characters in Invisible Man is the, I suppose, the president of the college that the main character was going to. And Ellison does a great job of explaining how this guy, Bledsoe, who is an African-American man, really forced forsaked his identity in order to climb up the social standings of the country, right? Like he, he committed identity-based suicide. And I, I think that's very powerful. And I'm not saying that, you know, I'm getting on a really needless tangent. I'm not saying that's what other women and people within the LGBT community have done or even proletariat people have done, but I think you get what I'm saying here. You can still roughly apply this logic across other lines, I feel. And for that reason, I think that's another aspect to this book and why I'd recommend it. Um, and you know, I hope to come across books that, yes, you know, sometimes I would say it's not worth your time. Um, but returning back to this specific book here, there's fundamental questions about black identity, right? Can society truly give you one as an African American, right? Society is constantly giving the narrator in the book an identity, whether it's that political organization or working at a paint factory or a student at a you know pretty good college. There's plenty of these things. And all the while, the main, the main character is always sort of dubious. He's doubting if these are truly his place and he always comes to find that they're not. Um, I'll shift to the next point here. These book reviews are gonna take some time to nail it down um, and they're still a journal. I wanna keep the off the cuff nature of them, but while reading the book, I'd often like to listen to Standing on the Corner, which is an album by Standing on the Corner. Um, if it'll focus, I have it playing right now. That's what the album cover looks like. Um, controversial, yes, but the music instills, instills a feeling of invisibility in my eyes. It, it meshed so perfectly, I couldn't not listen to it on many occasions. I don't know, there's just something that clicked for me. I don't really know how else to explain it. But, I don't know if you're a type of person that like likes to listen to certain music while you read, I would recommend that if you do want to pick up this book, you give it a go. And look, look at that. Um, here's an Ellison quote that I think doesn't necessarily sum it up, but gives you an inkling of what this book is like. Why is it that so many of those who would tell us the meaning of Negro life never bother to learn how varied it really is? Right, like, even today you still hear people talk about African American life. You know, and stereotype as well. I don't know how appropriate that is here, but they're all individuals at the end of the day. And in the book, the main character picks up an identity by a name, by a man named Reinhardt. And, you know, he experiences how radically different that life is from his. And the book definitely explores topics like this. And, you know, I'm reading reviews and 
it talks about how there is an existentialist undertone here, and I can see it too. What I didn't see mentioned was how the main character is living underground. You find this out in the in the introduction, so that's not a spoiler, but he's living underground, and it's almost like Notes from Underground by Fyodor Dostoevsky. Um, so I can see it, and really. it is a question about authenticity and obviously existentialism deals with with that that idea quite a bit but overall i highly recommend it um if not just for the beautiful writing there are so many instances instances and like i'll admit some of sometimes it even went over my head but um yeah that's invisible man um, the next book that I'm reading is <laughs> much different. It's The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy by Douglas Adams. I've heard good things, and I've only read a few sci-fi books, so this is the next one. I'm already going through it pretty fast. Sci-fi has the tendency to do that for me, I've found out. But if you want to read along, here you go. Um, I have such a big stack of books that I've got to go through, so I'm probably not going to read or buy any more until I like, at least take a decent chunk out of that book stack. Um, in terms of just journaling here, today's been pretty simple. I woke up early to clean. Um, on Thursdays, I don't have class. And... Uh, now I did this, I'll go to the gym, and then I work later tonight. So, pretty straightforward day, not much room to, like, goof off, I guess. Um, right now I'm very, very hungry, so maybe that's why I'm so scatterbrained here, but... That's that, I guess. It's Thursday, so... I hope you are having a good day. It's, we're coming towards the end of the week now. Um... The Nevada caucuses tonight, if that interests you. You know, I, I think we should keep our eyes on the election as as citizens, you know. You know, living in a republic, a democracy, whatever you want to call it, it's like I think we should be at least a little bit informed. But I guess that's probably a topic for a different day. Yeah, I'll leave it at that. Peace and love.